Holy smokes, that's a big old snake. Hey there, Dungeon Masters. Cartoon Lark here with our first ever episode of Boss Battle. This is where I'm going to be going over how to take our D&D &D monsters and make them the best boss battles ever. This week, for our first episode, we're going to be looking at how to make the Spirit Naga the best battle ever. Now, before I jump into it, this here I know is not the typical canon color for a spirit naga, but I ran a campaign called the Serpent of the Golden Grove. It was inspired by the Magic the Gathering card, the Snake of the Golden Grove. Fantastic art, which we used. Um, I had curi uh, uh, Creatures and Curiosities make me a miniature of that card, and it looks beautiful. She's an awesome artist. Check her out on Instagram, and we use this for our naga. Now, when we look up the naga in the dungeons, uh, masters, or I should say the, the monster manual, what we find is that spirit nagas are designed to be a monster, not really a boss, and that they've got 75 hit points and they're rated CR 8. Now, my party, typically, I have 8 players. If they're level 6, let's say, they're doing 10 damage around each on average. So this thing's going to be done in round 1. One round of a spirit naga, and if it loses the initiative, it doesn't bring us to attack. That's a cruddy boss battle. So, according to the book, Every boss needs the legendary actions. The dragon's got legendary actions. The holder's got legendary actions. The spirit naga needs legendary actions. Here's what I recommend. First off, double his hit points. Give him some extra on top of that. You want the guy to last at least a couple rounds for the way we're going to set this thing up. So give him a bunch of hit points. Why not? Let the party tear him apart. Let him chop his tail off and rip his horns off and not tear his hood apart. Let him have some fun with it and do some damage to this guy because he's only getting one attack every turn. If you give him a couple legendary actions now, he's going to be way better off. Here's the two you need. First off, legendary action. Once around, he can bite. He gets an extra bite once around. That way the snake is coming out a couple players every round instead of getting one attack. Second thing you got to give him is his spell. He has Dimension Door, but it's a spell. And if it's a spell, then he can only use it instead of his attack. And that kind of stinks because it's a snake. You know, you want him to bite and you want him to recoil. So he's got the bite legendary action and he's got the recoil legendary action. He only has to do one around, so he's going to have to make a decision. What I recommend to make this the most memorable fight ever is make this boss battle three stages. Stage number one, how do snakes attack? And think about it. The snakes don't just come right out and attack. They're not like coming up at you. This isn't a python. We want to see this guy slink back hide in the darkness. Whatever he's been doing to the townsfolk the party's heard about, whatever he's been doing to the party they're aware of, and they're trying to find this guy. He's not going to go looking for a fight. They're coming to him. For that reason, he's going to wait. And when he sees the opportunity, he strikes. What's the best thing you can do for a strike? It could be a bite. Nah. But if he can line the party up, boom, lightning bolt. First round of combat. They don't even get to roll for initiative. They get hit with a lightning bolt. Everybody make a dexterity saving throw. That is an awesome way to start combat. You're lowering the party's hit points as long as they haven't taken too much damage. Maybe they're coming off of a short or a long rest, so they've got their, they've got some room for error. Hit them with a lightning bolt, and then give the party one attack back. And they, they see his eyes through the darkness. 60 feet away, whoosh, lightning bolt flashes through. They all dodge out of the way, and then the rogue jumps up and says, I'm taking a shot with my arrow. Boom. He takes the shot. Let's say it hits. They think he goes back. And a blue light goes. And he vanishes through Dimension Door. He's gone again. That's stage one of combat. Stage one, pretty short. Damage the players a little bit. Let the players know that he's got a Dimension Door out as a legendary action. Now that they're aware of that, we get to stage number two. Stage number two, what would a creature like this use? He's got spells for lightning. Well, I mean, you, you want to use things to line people up. Be it the woods or the caves or whatever. You want to line up the players. Next thing he's got dominate person. As long as he can see them, he can dominate them. He only needs the verbal components. For that reason, I recommend you have him have mirrors. Mirrors. Party comes around the corner, they see a rectangle with his eyes in it, and boom, dominate person. Who's going to be the first person in the party? The guy checking for traps, the rogue, who can do quite a bit of assassination damage, or the tank, the guy with all the hit points. Either way, that person just got dominated. They spin around and they start attacking the party. They fight the party where the mirrors can't see them or back around the corner or whatever you want to do. They fight, they fight, they fight, they fight until they either dispel the magic or they snap the guy out of it or he makes a save, whatever the case. Eventually they get free. And what's nice, he's got one more dominate person spell. So when they come back around, even if they try to destroy the mirror, dominate person is at the ready. As soon as they peek, boom, dominated again. That's your stage two of combat. 
make the party fight themselves. In my opinion, my table loves it when somebody gets to switch sides and go up against the party, especially because we all know we're on the same side and we're going to try to help them. We're not just going to murder their character. We're going to try to get them to break out of it with whatever we can do. But that's an awesome thing for stage two. They're not even fighting the Naga. They were dealing with a lightning bolt. They're dealing with their own party members. And then they finally find the Naga. Now remember, we doubled his hit points. For that reason, it's going to be quite the fight. So when he comes in, he's got his bite action going on. He can use Charm Person on one and then use a bite as another action. But he's done with, with Dimension Door and out of there. He's only got one more spell slot for Dimension Door. So I guess he could bail out one more time if you wanted him to, to bail out to try to heal himself. Maybe he's got potions somewhere. Maybe he's got anti-poison somewhere. Whatever the case, he's got his big potions over the years and he's got those at the ready. But have the party pursue and fight. Give him lots of bites where the party's dodging and slipping and moving. Have him attack his eyes. Have him attack everything to wear him down until they finally defeat the spirit Naga. Now, if you guys don't know this at home, if your party doesn't know this, awesome. They come back in a few days. They can't be killed. They are immortal. I must use a wish spell to get rid of them. Now, I gave a few other options for my party to get rid of the Naga. They knew going in that it was an immortal, and they had to use some way to destroy the body so it couldn't rejuvenate. But whatever the case, you get to have some fun with that, because then the, the, the problems start all over again. And whatever they use to defeat the Naga the first time, they're going to have to do it all over. Anyway, that is three stages to a Naga to make it the best battle ever. First off, bam, lightning bolt and a dimension door. Second off, make them fight each other with some dominate person. Third of all, they're going in with their eyes closed. They don't want to get charmed. They're guessing where they're firing at that point. They got to find other ways around. They can destroy mirrors. They can be sure never to line up again. And you're teaching the party how to fight through three stages. Why does Zelda have the best boss battles ever? Because the bosses have stages. You're learning as you're going. It gets more challenging as you go. And that makes it fun. This will make your spirit Naga fight feel epic. You'll feel like you had to really like outsmart this creature, and it doesn't feel like it was just some monster. It's this ancient being who's been killing people off for thousands of years. Take these tips. Let me know in the comment section how your game goes. I hope you apply this to a Naga or any other creature that you feel can benefit this way. Have some fun with it, and I'll see you in the next one. A, B, see ya.